section on Chandrayaan-3, discussion on Chandrayaan-3, where we will be discussing about various details about the Chandrayaan-3 mission. And today to discuss on this session, we have our really good friends from Resolute Lab India. They are a space startup. They're working on various departments of space science, uh, like astrobiology and also space technology. So welcome them. And also, let's see how many of you are, guys are really excited about this station. Please let us know if you are really excited about this station in the chat. OK, I see people are really excited about this station. So without any further ado, let's start with the session. So I'd like to request our friends from Resolute Lab India to start with the session. Yeah, thank you, Manish. Thank you for the introduction. So hi, everyone. So good evening, good morning, good afternoon, where you are sitting. OK, so this particular session is regarding the Chandrayaan-3 mission, which is done by ISRO, Indian Space Research Organization. So firstly, I want you guys that how many of you know about this Chandrayaan-3 mission? Have you guys any idea about this mission or any thing you know about it? Like anything, like which vehicle is going to be used, like launch vehicle, or which type of uh, payloads we are carrying? What is the purpose of this mission? Anything you guys know, just put in the chat box or in the comment section. LVM-3, okay. LVM-3M4, that's very correct. Six, uh, 650 crore is the budget, okay. <laughs> Anything else you guys know? It is done by India, it is done by ISRO. Okay, you just, you can mention it, okay. It is a follow-up mission of Chandrayaan 2, okay. It is going to land on the poles, not short bridge which has very uh, very difficult terrain, okay. It won't have orbiter this time, only lander, okay. Anything you want to add something? Anything? Okay. So I think the audience is pretty much aware of the mission, okay. I can assume it, okay. So yeah, let's move into this. Chandrayaan 3 session, okay. So, as you know, we are from the Resolute Lab India, okay. So, we are working on some space applications tools, okay. I will be discussing at the end, okay. So, just focus on the Chandrayaan 3 mission. So, the agenda of this session is that we are going to discuss about the launch vehicle, which type of launch vehicle we are using for this mission. The propulsion module, like uh, Prerna has mentioned, that we are using uh, only lander and propulsion module. We will be discussing on that. We will be discussing on the scientific payload, okay? Because the launch vehicle is not uh, the thing which is going on to the moon. The payloads are going to land on the surface of the moon, okay? Through landers and rovers, okay? Then we will be discussing about the life cycle of Chandrayaan-3, then the orbit path, and at the end, we will be having question and answer. But yeah, in between, we also uh, discussing about some of the questions you guys have, okay? But wait. Why we are going doing this mission again, Chandrayaan 3? We have done this before, no? Chandrayaan 2. Then why we are going again with Chandrayaan 3 mission? Any reason for that? Like we have done Chandrayaan 2 mission, like then why we are going with this Chandrayaan 3 mission again? Guys, firstly turn on your camera. I, I think I should uh, also have covered the turn on. Just turn on your camera. I can see the faces. Okay, okay. Yeah, I forgot to turn on this. Okay. Yeah. So why we are going again on this mission? Like why we are doing Chandrayaan 3 mission again? Any idea? Yeah, just write in the chat section or you can speak. If you want to speak, you can speak. Just speak. Okay. You guys can speak again. Chandrayaan 2 was a failure. Okay, that's why we are going again. Okay. Chandrayaan 2 was partial success. Okay, we can say that Chandrayaan 2 was partial success. Okay, not a failure, but yeah, it was a partial success because 
as you guys already mentioned our uh, our orbital is orbiter is present in the orbit and we which we can use as a communication backup we are not going to use as a primary communication thing but yeah we can use it for the uh, secondary communication backup okay so this is going to work as a secondary communication backup system okay so yeah so the reason why we are having chandrayaan 3 is simple like we it aims to complete a soft landing on the moon okay okay which was not achieved by the chandrayaan obviously okay because when the chandrayaan 2 mission was planned it followed everything like it uh, the launch vehicle was pretty good launch vehicle did it did its job the orbit was perfect the orbit the the, the payload was perfectly orbited but during the landing time during the landing time we have a crash landing okay it's clear now it's clear it's clear by the officials of ISR it was a crash landing and during this we have all uh, almost destroyed all the payloads which the Chandrayaan 2 was carrying okay so because of that we are redoing this mission okay so this is a follow-up mission which something uh, some advancement like we have new payloads also this time we have some new payloads okay uh, this time have, we have done uh, some techniques. We have followed some techniques to improve this mission profile. Okay, so we are have, we have done something advanced from the last time. Okay, we have learned from our mistake. And as the ISR uh, chairman uh, Somnath sir mentioned that we have followed the failure mitigation technique. Okay, so what is failure mitigation technique? Is failure mitigation technique is we have learned from our failures and we have improved all the things. Like pretty much all the things we have improved, like the lander uh, lenders. Legs we have improved, okay. The fuel capacity and everything, almost everything, I will be discussing in this session, okay. And so we have improved a lot, okay, from this mission. So that's why we are redoing this mission, Chandrayaan, okay. So, yeah, uh, when we are doing a mission, there must be an objective of doing this mission. So, objective of this mission first objective is to safely land on the surface of. Uh, moon okay the lunar surface okay so we want to safely land on the surface of moon okay then we have to demonstrate our rover okay and like we have to move our rover on the surface of moon okay so this is the second objective then we have to uh, conduct the scientific experiment so here it is written in situ experiment scientific experiment means in person okay it means like the object will be doing physically all the experiments okay like on the moon surface it will be doing all the experiments so it is referred to as in situ okay so it will be doing all the experiments there are around six to seven payloads we are having and these six to seven payloads will be performing in a life cycle okay we will be discussing the life cycle like in particular time interval the all the payloads will be performing their experiments okay or uh, they will be collecting the data and they will be sending the data to the ground station on earth like to the ISR, okay. So this this is the mission objective. I hope this is clear. Okay, mission objective is clear because if it is if this thing is not clear, we can't proceed further. Okay, I hope this is clear. Uh, can I have yes yes in the chat or in the your YouTube comment section? Yes, it's clear. Okay, yes. Okay. So yeah. So this is the LVM three. Uh, which is earlier known as the GSLV Mark III. The name is changed because of some laws, the policies, because ISRO wants to enter in the international space market. Okay. Firstly, the name was GSLV. So what is the full form of GSLV, anyone? What was the full form of GSLV? It's Geosynchronous Launch Vehicle. Okay. So yeah, it was Geosynchronous Launch Vehicle. So, by its name, it was pretty clear that it can be used for the geosynchronous orbit. But the name has been changed by the ISRO. Now the name is Launch Vehicle Mark III. So it can be used for any orbit. Okay, It can be used for the low Earth orbit. It can be used for the geosynchronous orbit. Any orbit you want, you can use this particular launch vehicle. So they have marketed this launch vehicle correctly this time. Okay, So they have conducted three missions. So this is the fourth mission which is going to be. That's why they... Uh, vehicle name this time is uh, LBM three M four, which has been mentioned by someone in the chat. Okay, so this is the correct name this time. Okay, so we have uh, this. Uh, let me use the laser. So this is the firstly you can see the no? pointer. Everyone can see this pointer. Okay, 
so this is the payload fairing okay under this we have the payloads okay it will be opening like this okay so under this we have the payloads okay so and then we have this c25 this is the cryogenic stage this time we have this white color okay so this time we have this in the white color not in the black color so there are reason i will be telling you okay then we have this uh, solid boosters which are referred as s200 okay and then we have two solid boosters okay then we have this liquid stage which is this one from here to here this is the liquid stage then this short rockets are known as the flex nozzle okay so let us understand one by one so this is cryogenic stage cryogenic by its name is clear we will be using the cryogenic engine under this okay so this is a cryogenic stage then we have this liquid stage in this liquid stage we will be this is the vikas engine or the viking engine which was adapted from the viking engine so this is the vikas engine okay so this vikas engine this is vikas engine simply in which we are using liquid propellants okay then we have this solid boosters in which we are using the solid fuel okay so this is solid uh, uh, solid boosters okay then we have this flex nozzle so the purpose of flex nozzle is orient the launch launch vehicle okay so for example if your launch vehicle is going like this okay if your launch vehicle is going like this in the uh, atmosphere so if you want to build this launch vehicle uh, there are mechanism like thrust vector controlling and various other mechanism with the help of these mechanism you will fire some uh, thrust over there okay? uh, uh, longitudinally you will be firing some thrust okay so this thrust will be tilting the whole rocket okay so because of this the rocket will be following the trajectory which you have already decided okay so these flex nozzles are used for that purpose okay so this is the thing now in the payload fairing we will be having the chandrayaan 3 i have already cleared this this is a cryogenic stage this is vikas engine in which we will be using the liquid propulsion okay this is solid proper solid boosters we will be studying the working okay i will be giving you the brief of the working but not in detail but yeah a brief of what and how these propulsion systems work okay so now what is this lvm3 like we are using this lvm3 for various purposes like we have used this for the one wave satellite okay why we are using uh, this for the chandrayaan 3 mission is there any specific reason why can't we use that pslb which we have used for the or uh, chandrayaan 1 mission why we are not using that any reason any specific reason i can give you a hint high payload capacity okay so this is this is, you can consider it as a hint high payload capacity okay so because of the high payload capacity and because of the high weight okay of the rocket modules we are using this lvm3 because it can carry a huge amount of weight okay so it can carry a huge amount of weight that's why we are using this lvm3 okay so there are stages in lvm3 okay so anyone have the idea of stages we have in lvm3 like what are these types of stages we are we have in the lvm3 like how the lvm3 works guys i have only done on the camera you guys are not done yet. why are you not turning on the cameras four stages four stages okay three stages okay anyone four stages okay so let us understand it okay see firstly when we i can't use the video over here because this is going live on the youtube okay so there can be copyrights that's why i'm not using the video otherwise i, I have used the videos okay so consider this as your lvm3 okay then we have this your solid boosters like uh, let me go back okay so these are your solid boosters okay this pan is your lvm3 okay inside we have solid boosters so firstly when the ignition starts okay at the first point okay we the ignition is started through the solid boosters okay solid booster start producing the thrust okay this liquid stage is not touched this liquid stage is not initiated at first okay only the solid boosters are turned on okay so this is the first stage okay then if you can see over here 
minutely we have a covering over this liquid uh, propulsion systems like a white covering okay this is a carbon composite covering why this is done because when the solid propulsion is done they will produce a fume and that fume can be entered in, into this liquid propulsion and due to which there can be a uh, various reason that your liquid propulsion is not going to work okay so there can be reason that's why we put a film over the liquid propulsion and uh, during this whole process at uh, like around t plus th uh, 3 minutes we remove this film manually okay there are process like from the ground station we remove this film manually okay so this is known as the no nozzle removal uh, process so we remove this film and after that when the whole solid boosters are burned properly then we have the ignition in the liquid state okay you must be thinking that how the solid propulsion engines are working i will be clearing it okay so then this liquid uh, propulsion ignition starts okay after the completion of your solid boosters and after the deattachment of your solid boosters so how the solid boosters are going to deattach so here we have pyro we use pyro mechanism so we have three uh, three pyros on one single uh, solid booster like one two and three okay one two and three so we have six pyros and due to uh, with the help of the pyro mechanism we blast the pyros and this solid boosters get separated okay so this solid booster get separated after that we have a ignition in your liquid propulsion then your liquid propulsion uh, starts it goes up up to a certain altitude after that your liquid propulsion get separated okay then your cryogenic this is the third stage okay then your cryogenic uh, stage start okay because of this cryogenic stage it is only capable that you can reach the lunar surface in minimum time okay otherwise the time will be required a lot of time okay we can reach with the psl but the time will be decays and the fuel capacity is decays okay so then we use this cryogenic stage after this cryogenic stage when this whole process is done this payload fairing will be open okay so this payload fairing will be open and you will be in the space environment okay so you will be in this space okay so then only the whole process begins okay so this is how the ignition takes place okay like firstly your solid boosters will be burning then your liquid uh, propulsion then your cryogenic then the last stage okay so this is how the whole the structure of the lvm3 works okay so here we can see the uh, configuration like as i have mentioned this is the your anyone can recall this name are you guys attentive on flex 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 nozzle no okay so these are the flex nozzles okay so we are using this flex nozzles then we have this solid propulsion okay so how the solid propulsion works okay here we have this igniter over here i will be showing the exact picture which is used in isro so we have a igniter we ignite this whole thing and we charge the igniter like igniter will be coming inside this okay so igniter will be coming and the solid propulsion the the constituent materials will be burning okay so this is how the solid propulsion systems work in the liquid propulsion we have a combination of the chemicals and with the help of this chemicals the liquid propulsion thing works okay and if you observe here uh, in this thing this are the white layers of wires or the white structure on this thing okay so this is the avionics this is the avionics which is interconnected okay like we have to remove this solid boosters for that purpose we have this avionics systems over here there are control systems over here uh, which govern the whole process which govern the whole algorithm of this uh, launch vehicle okay so we have this for this purpose and if you look we have a cryogenic stage okay in the cryogenic stage we use turbo pumps turbo generator jet jet uh, jet generators okay so it is a complex thing uh, it cannot be covered in this session okay properly but yeah for just basic understanding we use turbo pumps and turbo jets in the cryogenic engines okay and because of that engine this is this become really powerful okay really powerful okay so because of this we can 
uh, enhance the your what we can say the efficiency of your launch vehicle. Okay, so this is the thing. Then, if you focus here, we have a linings over here, like nozzles. In nozzles, we have a lining over there. These are the composite fibers. Okay, why we have put this composite fiber over here for the cooling purposes, like. When the solid boosters will be burning, it will be producing heat around it. Okay, so for the cooling purpose, we have put the composite fiber. So how the composite fiber cooling works? Like it will be a peeling off, like uh, like at hundred, uh, let's say at hundred degree centigrade, it will peel off. Then another two hundred degree centigrade, it will peel off. One layer, layer by layer, it will be peeling off. Okay, so this is how this uh, cooling system works. Uh, when we have a composite carbon. Cooling. Then we have a regenerative cooling. The regenerative cooling is done through the chemicals we used. Okay. So this is how we keep our launch vehicle cool and calm. Okay. So this is the igniter which we are putting in your solid boosters. Like in this, we are putting the. Okay. So this is the igniter. This is the exact image of the ISRO. Okay. So this is how we put the igniter. Okay. So igniter is put under the solid uh, propulsion systems. Okay. So. This is what a launch vehicle look. Okay, so you must be thinking that yeah, everything is fine with the launch vehicle. So, can we trust this launch vehicle for the Chandrayaan three mission? I'm not giving you any uh, thing like, can we trust this launch vehicle or not for Chandrayaan three mission or any future mission? Yeah, guys, speak up. Can we trust this launch vehicle or not? Yes or no? We can. Maybe we can. Maybe okay. Most probably we can. Okay, so yeah, guys, we can trust this launch vehicle. Okay, there are some things which can be which can go wrong, but. We can trust this launch vehicle ninety five percent, okay? Because there are there are some previous failures in this launch vehicle. Like if you see this, this is the Soyuz uh, launch vehicle by the Russia. In this, we have this Warner engines. So in some launches in the GSLV, when we have the GSLV, when the name was GSLV, then we have some failures because of this Warner uh, engines. Then second time we have the uh, the failures due to the turbo pumps, like which we have in the crash and engine. Okay, so these are the two major things we can have. But this time we don't have this one-year engines in the whole uh, architecture of your launch vehicle. But we have these turbo jets in your crash and engine because without turbo jet your crash and engine can't work. Okay, so but yeah, this particular thing has been removed totally. Okay, but we have one thing like turbo jets. So there can be the problem, but yeah, this time. We are pretty much sure that launch vehicle will not be causing any problem, okay? Because the last time also the launch vehicle was perfect. So this time we are also, yeah, anyone was has raised the hand, okay? So this time we can also consider that launch vehicle will be going totally intact, okay? So launch, so from our side, from the study we have, launch vehicle is going to be perfect this time also, okay? There can be marginal errors, okay? Like. Two to three percent of the errors, but yeah, that can be a luck of ISR or the organization that depends totally. Okay, so this is whole thing about your launch vehicle. Like I think everything is clear. Like how we are using this launch vehicle. Like we have the solid stage, solid boosters. Then we have this your liquid stage. Then we have your cryogenic stage. Then we have this Chandrayaan three payload fairing stage. So I think this whole thing is clear. Like. Uh, earlier, you must be seeing this as something else. Like, what what is this particular thing? Uh, you may have learned this is flex nozzle. This works on the mechanism of thrust vector controlling. Okay, so they are mechanism thrust vector controlling. The spirals are removed on the basis of algorithm. There is time system. Like at this particular time interval, when the indicating level of your solid fuel is this much, it will be getting busted. Okay, so this is how the whole thing works in the launch vehicle. So I hope the launch vehicle part is clear of Chandrayaan three. Yes or no? In the chat section, yes or no? Clear, clear. 
so then we have the after the launch we have to follow the orbit okay so after the launch we have to follow the orbit so we have a simple orbit this orbit was given by the isro okay so i have taken the same orbit okay so after the injection you know, after the going out from the earth atmosphere after escaping the earth atmosphere we will be going in this orbit particular orbit okay so after it will be revolving in this orbit for a certain time period okay after that it will be ejecting from this orbit and it will be transferring into the lunar orbit okay so after a certain period of time like you say around 7 8 days after 7 8 days it will it will be going into the lo, uh, lo, lunar orbit okay so the payload fairing the payload which i considered okay the crash and everything so it will be getting into the your lunar or, orbit okay so after the insertion in the lunar orbit it will be revolving here and after this certain period of time like uh, the time expected is around 25th of hours and between 25th or to 30th of hours okay so between that period of time it will be landing on the surface of moon okay so if you see here it can be zoomed out so we will be touching down the lunar surface through this following orbit okay so i suppose this orbit path is works on simple laws okay we follows the kepler's law so on the basis of this kepler's law we form this orbit and this orbit is like freely defined okay we the launch vehicle has to follow this path only okay the payload fairing has to follow this path only okay other than the insertion like if the uh, the payload follows some other part it will be uh, fluctuating an error okay so there are some sensors to prevent this type of error and we have some small thrusters inside the payload fairing so because of that the payload follow the same orbit okay the whole structure which is carrying the propulsion module which you said now the propulsion module follow the same orbit path okay because of the small thrusters and all type of mechanism which it follows and there is a total during this whole process like right, from this particular orbit from this earth orbit to this lunar orbit we have a proper communication system like there is a orbiter which is or already present in the lunar orbit so we have a proper communication with that particular thing to the ground stations okay so this is how the orbit thing works this is the path so the first thing your launch vehicle goes up and after it goes up it follows the your earth orbit then after the certain period of time it gets transferred into your lunar orbit and then it touch down the your lunar surface okay so i hope this particular part and this slide is clear yes or no yes guys it's clear okay so yeah before going further i want to show you this thing particular thing and i uh, so i want to show you this particular thing anyone can re uh, recall this what is this in the chat section anyone can recall this what is this particular thing this is the chandrayaan 3 uh, chandrayaan missions like any of the mission previously like you guys seen that it is the first time we are landing on the south pole no it is not the first time we are landing on the south pole we have landed on the south pole but in a different manner so just tell this picture is public uh, recently like one two days before so many of you don't know about this okay so any one of you have the idea of chandrayaan one mission because if you know about chandrayaan one mission you can answer this question anyone yeah anyone have the idea so yeah how many of you know about the moon impact probe mip this is the module which was crashed on the moon to no 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 yeah yeah this is the same module but if you are considering this to the chandrayaan 2 but this is not the chandrayaan 2 this is already chandrayaan 1 mission the moon impact probe okay so this is the moon impact probe okay this we have already uh in the chandrayaan 1 mission okay so this was the point the moon uh, impact probe followed like this is the jump. it is at this particular point it crashed okay so we have already we are already on the south pole of the moon surface okay and for your knowledge like uh, many of you must say that uh, like your 
NASA has uh, discovered about the presence of water on the surface of moon. But no, NASA has not done this. Okay, they have this uh, their payload in this Chandrayaan one mission only. NASA has sent their payload in the Chandrayaan one mission only. But the NASA has not done the discovery of your water on the surface of moon. Okay, it is done by the India. But there is a uh, fight between India and uh, NASA. ISRO doesn't talk a lot about this, but if you saw a recent interview of uh, Somnath sir, uh, I will not <laughs> name the channel. Okay, so if you saw the recent interview of the Somnath sir, so he has clearly mentioned that ISRO has done the discovery of water on the surface of moon. Okay, so only ISRO has done the discovery of moon or water on the surface of moon. Okay, so it has been already discovered. The water has been already discovered by the uh, your Chandrayaan one mission. Okay, so at this particular point where, uh, where the your uh, moon impact probe crashed. Okay, so it is uh, referred as the Jawhar point. Okay, because if you know uh, this is due to the political influence. Okay, so we have named this at, as a Jawhar point. Okay, then we have a uh, Shackleton point. Shackleton point is the point where we find the water molecules, precipitation of the water molecules. The NASA, the NASA's N3, which was the meteorological payload. Okay, so it searched about the water molecules. It searched. It was not that it doesn't search anything. Okay, it searched, but the amount of discovery which was done by the Chandrayaan Moon probe was much much larger than because the percentage was like 70 to 80 percent. The water precipitation level, the molecules. Of the water verification done by the uh, moon impact probe in the Chandrayaan moon mission was greater than the your N3, which was the NASA payload. Okay, so that's why we say that uh, your Chandrayaan one mission has discovered the moon on the surface, oh, moon or the water on the surface of moon. Okay, so this is the approximate location. Okay, so if we are going this time also, so this time we are having a location around this time. This last time it was 89 degree. South, okay, 30 uh, degree west, okay. This time is around 40 degree south, and the west location is not mentioned, I okay. think. And they have mentioned the slope and all the things, but the west location is not mentioned. They have only mentioned the south location, okay. Maybe they will mention after the whole process, okay. So this is the whole thing which has been done already in the Chandra mission. And also to mention, this moon impact probe has the altimeter, okay. This has the altimeter, and and some laser systems also. And because of which, we have decided the landing of the Chandrayaan 2 and Chandrayaan 3 missions. The Chandrayaan 2 mission, how the Chandrayaan 2 mission was going to land properly on the surface of Moon. We don't have any data. The NASA doesn't provide any data. Then how we are going to land on the surface of Moon? Because we have the data from the Chandrayaan 1 mission. Because the Chandrayaan 1 mission has the data of the all the uh, terrain of the, because how the laser system works, how the spectrometer works, they create a 3D atlas, okay? Like what I say. Let's put this as a this as a terrain of your moon, okay? So this will be your terrain and uh, your Chandrayaan thing, okay? So this mobile, consider this mobile as a Chandrayaan 1 mission. So this Chandrayaan 1 mission will be scanning the surface, the surface of your moon, okay? So after scanning the surface of your moon, it will be creating a 3D atlas, okay? Like we say, no, in uh, today's, we have a generative AI system. Okay, so this generative AI system has been already done by your ISR. Okay, so we create 3D atlas with the help of these data points. Okay, with the help of this data point, we create the 3D atlas. And with the 3D atlas, we have the points, we have the location on which we have to land on the surface. Like we have the whole surface point. We have identified the whole location. We have the whole 3D atlas of the particular location on which we want to land. So if you are saying that Chandrayaan 1 mission was is not linked with the Chandrayaan 2 or Chandrayaan 3, no, it's linked because it has already taken the data of the altitude, the terrain surface, and all other things. Like some things are not in uh, the most of the data is not in public, but yeah, the, uh, the ISRO may have the data, and because of that data points, they have created the mission profile of Chandrayaan 3. Okay, so these are the some insights about Chandrayaan 3 mission and Chandrayaan 1 mission. Okay. So, yeah, so your rocket was going up, it follows the Earth orbit, then it transferred into the moon orbit, then it landed, okay? 
so after landing this is your lander and rover okay so the lander will be landed okay so i will be telling you how your chandrayaan 2 mission failed also okay at the end of this uh, session okay so this is your lander it will be landing okay this time it has only four thrusters this time it has only four engines to be precise uh, last time we have five engines but this time we have four engines why because we have removed the central engine and because of that removal we have uh, like saved around uh, some amount of mass okay okay uh, one thing how many of you can understand english <laughs> i am just speaking english can you guys understand english or should i explain in hindi also you guys are comfortable in english right? sabko english samajh mein aa rahi hai na yaar main main bhool gaya tha ye puchna sorry okay okay sure, sure. okay so yeah. so after land oh so this chandrayaan 3 mission has the four engines last time we have the five engines okay so five engines though in the five engines like uh, again this mobile is your chandrayaan 3 mission okay so here we have your like here we have your one engine two three four in chandrayaan 2 we have a central engine also so this central engine was working as a like to avoid the collision to avoid the collision we were using the central engine in that particular chandrayaan 2 mission so like you know people mention that we don't have any avoidance system like av avoidance system uh, in the chandrayaan 2 mission we have we have designed that engine but it was not that much precise okay because of some uh, uh, there was a quantization error so okay like if you have listened to the speeches of uh, swamna sir he has mentioned that there was a dispersion of molecules which was done okay but those not dispersion thing i will be telling you explaining you from my perspective okay this is not any perspective okay it can be wrong okay it can be wrong also so i will be explaining you on my perspective okay so why this time we have four engines because firstly we have reduced the mass okay we have removed one engine we have reduced the mass so we have increased the fuel capacity okay we have increased the fuel capacity and by increasing the fuel capacity our lander has a choice our lander can land anywhere on the surface of moon but this time we have not going to precisely land on particular coordinates like last time we have this x y z coordinates we have to land on this particular coordinate this time we have a like a 500 into 500 of area in this particular area we can land anywhere also if the lander doesn't find any suitable location like there can be rocks there can be some uh, sand molecules or there can be the water because the the soil of that particular surface is expected to be very sticky okay why it is going to be very sticky because we have uh, because there is a presence of water na that's why the soil is going to be pretty much sticky so if the soil is sticky your thrusters module are not going to work properly so that's why your lander has a choice that it can land anywhere like around 500 into 500 area and after that if it has the fuel capacity it can land up, uh, beyond that area also okay it can land beyond that area also so it has the freedom this time like it can land almost around 700 to 800 in square feet of the area okay so this time the lander has the freedom of landing anywhere so because this time they are going uh, very wrong this time they have to land anyhow okay so this time they have given the freedom okay so this was the whole thing then your yeah, yeah, your rover will be coming up but let me focus here your lander will be having some payloads some scientific payloads okay like here you can see this is the uh, rolling cameras and all the things i will be explaining in detail okay then your rover will be also having some payload also the rover has two payloads and the four payloads are uh, carried by a lander only okay so the four experiment will be done in the lander itself and the two experiment will be done while roving the surface while roving the surface on the uh, on the lunar surface okay so this is how the whole processor is going to be done okay so now now any one of you know about the payloads what is payloads and how many types of payloads we are going to carry in this mission you know that yeah you in the earlier you guys mentioned that we are going for the soft landing we are going for the chandrayaan 2 mission again but none of you mentioned that we are going to done some scientific experiments none of you not even a single guy has mentioned uh, that we are going to yeah some of you have uh, said that we are going to study the terrain surface okay that was pretty much correct we have this 
uh, payload, one payload. We have a one payload to study the terrain. Okay. Anyone? Why these payloads are designed? For what purpose payloads are designed? Any idea? Speak up, guys. Yeah. Yeah. Firstly, turn on your cameras. I am only turning on my cameras. None of you have turned on your camera. In the chat section, you can speak. Okay, if you want. Guys, I'm audible now. Harsh, yes, sir. Uh, you are audible. Okay, okay. Yes, you are audible. Okay, sure. So payloads are nothing. Payloads contain some sort of experiment or some sort of instruments. Okay, I'm just giving you the brief. Okay, so Ramba LP, chess team, Ilsa, scientific payloads. Okay, very good, Pranshu. These are the payloads which we are carrying. Okay, this and uh, so the payloads are simply we carry some scientific experiment in a payload. Or we carry some sort of instrument to study the environment of anything. Like we can carry the payload for studying the atmosphere. Like there are some meteorological payloads, there are remote sensing payloads. Okay, but for the lunar surface, if I will be confining this, so we are carrying the payload for the lunar surface to study the terrain. Okay, uh, like the chest. Okay, then we have the rumba to study the whole atmospheric uh, your ionization of or the ions property or the Another things, okay. Then we have another payloads to study the component composition of magnesium and all the things, okay. Yeah, Priyansh has mentioned all the payloads, EPX, lips, okay. So these types of payloads are used to study the whole atmosphere of the your lunar surface. Like what we do now, like if we are going to purchase a house, we look for everything. Like this house has proper electricity. This house has a proper uh, water condition. This house has proper ventilation. This house has uh, was if you look for the vastu sastra it has a has a proper vastu sastra the sun is coming from this side or not so we look for this thing now so this is then how we are doing this thing with the help of our payloads we have eyes eyes is working as a optical instruments okay we have hands hands are working as a robotic arm okay so we have this type of payloads in our human body also these are the instruments okay so we can sense okay if you want to hear about the location from the neighborhood you can use our ears Ears can be working as your uh, audiometric payload. Okay, so we can hear from the neighbor that how is this location, particular location. So we have the payload in our own body. We have the instruments in our own body. Similarly, if you want someday, like we want someday, we want to live on the moon. Okay, or we want to make the moon surface for a base. Like we want uh, the moon surface as a base. Okay, like in future, if we want to go to Mars. We should have a surface like the launching pad. So we are creating the moon surface. We are treating the moon surface like that only. Okay. So we have to study all the things like what is the surrounding of the moon, where if there is water or not, uh, what sort of composition the soil has. Is soil uh, good for the vegetation purpose? Okay. Can we grow the plants on the surface of moon? So we want to study all the things. Okay. That's why we are using the payloads. Okay. That's the whole context why we are using the payloads. Okay. So the, this is the payload fairing, which you have seen earlier. In this, we have this whole propulsion module. In this, we have this, this is the nose corner, which I showed you earlier. Okay. So this is your lander module. We, I said now that we will be having a lander module and the propulsion module. Okay. So this lander module and your propulsion module will be acting on your Moon surface, so they, they will be significantly working on your moon surface. Okay, so on your moon surface, when this land, this has the reaction wheels. Anyone knows how? Uh, what is the purpose of this reaction wheels? Anyone? What is the purpose of reaction wheels? Yeah, the wheels, wheels, to wheels are there. Yeah, okay, reaction. What sort of reaction kar rahe? Kaise kar rahe? What is the working principle of this reaction wheels? Guys, yeah, just this is a simple question. Like, why we are using this reaction wheels? Any idea? Just give it. Okay, you are here to learn now. So just speak up. Produce the pressure and land softly. Okay. When atmospheric details. Okay. Anyone want to add something in this particular? Sure. 
shock absorber okay that's pretty good so yeah reaction wheels are not used for this purposes like shock absorber or anything so reaction wheels just uh, ori orient your whole propulsion module like if you, this is your propulsion module so reaction wheel will be having your with the help of the sensor and actuators present in the reaction wheels and as i mentioned earlier with the help of the thrust vector controlling mechanism so the reaction wheel will be acting okay so the reaction wheel will be moving your uh, the your propulsion module okay so this will this are used for that purpose okay so then we have this lander horizontal velocity camera this was not present in chandrayaan 2 okay so this is used this time okay so with the help of this lander uh, velocity camera we will be uh, having the image of your horizontal the horizontal image okay and the vertical image also we will having the resolution of around 126 uh, psi of the vertical images also so we can have the vertical image as well as the horizontal image with the help of this velocity camera then we have this jst payloads so i will be uh, discussing in uh, detail then we have ramba payload then we have k vent altimeter so again we have this altimeter thing okay so this altimeter will be calculating the data like uh, if this is a surface of moon so if this is this is how your uh, uh, your propulsion module is coming so it will be calculating the distance like how much is the distance like 3 km 4 km 5 km 2 km okay so it will be calculating the distance with the help of this k band altimeter and this k band altimeter has the efficiency that it will be directly sending the data to the ground station okay so it will be directly sending the data to the ground station so this time if anything go goes wrong they will be having the exact data that at which particular time interval we have this uh, crash or something uh, provide attitude control authority and stability on the spacecraft yeah we have this attitude control authority and stability on this you are saying about the uh, reaction wheels no i suppose you are saying about the reaction wheels but uh, uh, beyond the reaction wheels we have a separate attitude control system for your whole payload thing okay we have a whole separate attitude control system we have a separate thermal control system for your payloads okay so we have this system in a different thing okay so then we have a laser uh, doppler uh, velocity meter the star sensor which will be tracking the stars okay on the basis of tracking it will be working then already mentioned elsa payload lander legs okay altimeter okay so this is the thrust like it is of the propulsion module no? so it, it will be producing the 800 newtons of thrust okay so it is yeah it is liquid engine based okay then we have this lh dac this is the lander hazard detection avoidance camera okay this will be uh, capturing the image of the whole terrain okay on the basis of this it will be creating the data points and on after creating the data points it will be creating a uh, idea like at this particular surface can we land or not it will be taking the decision automatically okay this is not controlled manually this whole lander thing is going to operate uh, automatically okay so it will be taking decision at the instant okay like i can land on the surface or not okay how it is going to take the decision like for example uh, if uh, you have a surface again taking this as a moon okay so if you have this surface and you have some stones over here like consider this as the stone okay this mouse as the stone so we have a stone over here okay and if your lander want to land it will identify it will i scan this it will scan this and it will like from the lasers also we will be using lasers also na so from the lasers it will be scanning this like yeah here we have the stone here we have a pebble or something like this i can't land here so it will be moving slowly and it will be landing here okay it can just land next to the stone also okay it can just land uh, next to the stone also okay it is the possibilities okay so with the help of this lander hazard detection already system we can uh, land and we can identify the train also okay so this i will be explaining afterwards okay but yeah this is this is important thing like warm electronics box okay why we have this because the temperature on this uh, southern part is very very good okay that's why i have we have this warm electronic box because the electronics which we are using okay the electronics which we are using cannot survive that particular temperature okay it cannot survive that particular temperature okay and this time also we have increased the surface area of the solar panels also like 
uh, the it can uh, produce large amount of energy at this particular interval like the, what is the life cycle now during that particular life cycle it can create certain amount of energy that it can survive totally in that particular life cycle okay so i think this particular things are not uh, <laughs> there to be explained there yeah, but this thing i can explain like there are some straps over the wheels if you have seen the video on youtube you must have seen the uh, there are some straps on the wheels okay there are some small small uh, what we in hindi we say there are some small patti okay so there is some small patti on the wheel surface why is it that why we do we have that small uh, strip on the surface of wheel any idea guys anyone can say yeah you can say like to avoid friction or something no idea okay so these steps are like to measure the terrain of the just like a tank okay yeah firstly they are to do avoid friction second reason is like to calculate the terrain like we have to study the soil of the your surface of the moon na so with the help of this small strips what we can do if we are like if you are uh, moving if you are walking on a surface by putting your foot uh, foot on the surface you can exert like force you will be exerting some force na so while putting that strip on that particular surface you will be having the uh, density you will be having the amount of adaptability that soil has like if we are putting a friction of like say uh, 10 newtons okay so force of 10 newtons so by applying the force of 10 newton is that particular surface is going down or it is stable okay or the amount of water maybe na there can be amount of water surface water inside that particular thing na so if we are pressing that surface is there some molecules of water or not okay so that's why we have the small strips on that surface okay so this is why this is the possible reason this can be the possible reason why we have these straps the second reason is the most favorable that to avoid the your friction okay to prevent the friction okay those strips have the sensors yeah those strips have the sensor this is this has been confirmed okay these strips have the sensors okay so yeah this was a question by gaurav what is star sensor okay so star sensor are like it will be calculating the data from the stars surrounding the moon okay there are several stars surrounding the moon okay so with the help of photocells it has a sensor known as photocells with the help of this photocell sensor it will be uh, gathering the data and on the basis of that data it will be directing the, uh, the whole lander that yeah at this time you have to move at this time you have to do this or do that okay because there are certain algorithm which works on the uh, basis of your star sensor okay and also we send the data to the ground station also na like uh, you guys have heard about a dhruv tara okay so with the help of dhruv tara we can identify a particular location okay i am taking the basic example okay so with the help of a dhruv tara we can identify a particular location so if in an space we have a star let's say cx985 something name as a star okay so we have that star and our lander has detected that star so we can detect the location exact location of our uh, lander that at this time with the help of the telescope of nasa or something Uh, we can detect the location of our lander like at this time our lander has detected this star so our lander must be at this particular point okay at this particular point our lander must be situated is of the chandrayaan 2 or chandrayaan 3 okay so we can do this with the help of the star sensor okay because we will be having the data isro must having the data of that chandrayaan 2 with the help of the star sensor they have used earlier okay so i hope it is clear okay don't we have that much compatible telescope no isro doesn't have that telescope till late okay isro is working i will be telling you okay the payloads are really interesting okay you will be getting the idea that what is the plan what is the future the yeah, isro is thinking okay working on okay the branch will just stay at the end i will be telling you that yeah isro is going to design a telescope okay so yeah 
So these are the payloads which we are using, like Ramba, which is the radio uh, radio anatomy for moon. Like it will be studying the ionosphere and the atmosphere of the moon. Okay. Then we have the chest. It will be studying the thermal thermal condition of the moon. Like what are the thermal condition of the moon? What is the thermal condition of the soil itself? Okay. Then we have the ILSA. ILSA will be uh, going for the seismic activities. Like uh, there are earthquakes or not earthquake are on the earth surface. There are moon quake, moon quakes or not. Okay, it will be uh, getting the data for the seismic activities. Okay, then we have this uh, retro uh, reflector which will be detecting and creating an array. Okay, it will be creating a 3D atlas for us. Okay, so in future if we want to land some another lander or rover, it will be. Uh, creating a 3D atlas for us. Then we have this alpha particle X-ray spectrometer. Okay. Then we have this laser-induced breakdown spectroscope. Okay. And we have this shape. This, this shape, the branch which has mentioned that uh, do we have the compatible telescope? You will be getting the idea like is ISRO going to design a telescope or not by this payload? Okay, shape. Okay. This was not in the your Chandrayaan two mission. This was not in the Chandrayaan two mission. Okay. So firstly, Ramba. So Ramba will be studying about the ionosphere and the atmosphere of the moon surface. Okay. So it will be uh, collecting the data of the ions, electrons, and all sort of quarks and the small materials. And with the help of that data, it will be uh, sending the data to the Earth surface and the wavelengths. Okay. Also the wavelengths. So like we can say now, like if there are aliens. Okay. So we. There can be a possibility that we can't see the aliens because of the spectrum which we can see. Okay, like we have a visible spectrum. Okay, maybe the aliens are not in that particular spectrum. Okay, maybe the aliens are in some other spectrum. Okay, so we can get that particular idea from that wavelength the data collected by this type of payloads. Okay, so this will be collecting the data for that particular thing. Okay, like for the wavelengths of the atmosphere and all the particular thing. Okay. Then we have this chase tip payload. Okay, so this will be studying about the uh, thermal effect. Like, what is the uh, thermal state of your moon surface? What is the thermal of the surrounding surface? Okay, so it will be getting almost uh, everything about the moon, uh, the temperature and all the thing. Like how the temperature is dropping, how the temperature is rising on the moon surface. So it will be having the all sort of idea. Okay, so this is going to work in two stages. There is active sensor which is going to be used and this is a there is a passive sensor okay so there are two stages in which the chest is going to work okay so this is the thing about the chest and uh, chest payload okay so this is the chest probe uh, in the whole lander this chest probe will come down and it will be inserted into the your moon okay it will be deployed into the moon it will be having the data of your soil after that it will be upholded for a certain period of time, it will be having the data of your surrounding of the moon surface. Okay. So this is how your chest payload is going to be worked. Okay. What if we ended up landing on the dust dunes instead of the real surface on the moon? I have cleared this, but yeah, I will be clear. See what happens. Uh, <clears throat> let me show you. I mentioned this. Yeah, here only. Yeah. So, see, this was the data from the moon impact probe uh, in the Chandrayaan 1 mission. Okay. So, this was the southern uh, pole data. Okay. This is the southern pole data by the moon impact probe of the Chandrayaan 1 mission. And with that data, we have the all the like, almost everything, like how our payload is going to land. Okay. One second. So we have the almost all the data that how our payload is going to land on the surface. Okay. So with that particular thing, like you have mentioned that there can be dust dunes or something else. So this time ISRO has already said, uh, said officially that we are providing a uh, range of 500 into 500 to land on the surface of moon. Okay. Instead of that, they have provided an additional uh, uh, landing range of 700 into 800. Okay means it can land around your one uh, like 800 into 800 square feet of area okay it can land it okay so how it is going to be done 
we have reduced the four engines like first time uh, in the previously chandra and two we were using the five engines this time we have only four engines okay so we have reduced the weight and we have increased the fuel capacity so by the increase in the fuel capacity we have the freedom that our lander can rove around the surface of moon and it can land properly on the fresh surface okay like on a proper surface okay see friends if that is a case i think it is not going to happen okay this is not certain like because we we have the data like see this moon impact probe data is just released two days before the chandrayaan 3 mission okay this the data which is on your screen okay this is the latest data you will not find this data okay maybe some of may used okay but they have a lot of data okay we are discussing on the data which is present in the uh, audience like in the general public okay but we don't know about the exact data like they may have the data about the exact location also they may have the terrain they have, may have the exact terrain surface also okay so we don't know about that data this is the public data on which we are discussing okay on which i can give you my perspective or the thought process okay so this is my perspective that on the data which is available this there is possibility that they can land properly okay properly but if there is a case there is dust and dunes present over there god god knows what is going to happen okay so this is not going to be happen okay i suppose because they have the data okay i hope the uh, uh, answer is clear who has asked this for okay for again the yeah, answer sure, okay i hope it's clear yeah wait for yeah friends sure. the data from chandra right yeah i will be sharing it okay if you want i will be sharing the data in the group if you are in the group i will be sharing it okay yeah this is an old data <laughs> this is the data of 2009 okay okay yeah Uh, this is how your ch chest payload is going to work okay then we have this elsa payload okay how can i join resolute lab this can we can discuss later on okay we don't have current data we see the current data they may have talked with the nasa okay the recent visit of uh, the see the recent visit doesn't concern about this chandran 3 maybe they have the data okay i am just saying the data is not public okay they may have the exact data also okay like the 3d you guys are not aware of the 3d atlas okay they create a 3d atlas on the basis of the data points they collect okay yeah we don't have the current data because no one has landed on <laughs> around the surface recently okay no one has landed recently around that surface china china is not going to share the data if china has done the particular thing china is not going to share the data even with the nasa okay so we are just gambling on that thing okay the science just work on this particular thing okay in science we believe okay <laughs> we don't know what is going to happen next okay so maybe we can discuss this on 25th of august like has the chandrayaan 3 landed properly or not okay so this we can discuss on that particular thing okay so we have this elsa elsa will be measuring the lunar seismic activities okay like uh, there can be the sort of any what is the exact uh, condition of the lunar surface so it can measure all the things okay so with the help of the name sensor there are the name sensors okay Mechan electromechanical sensors with the help of the electromechanical sensors they will be measuring the seismic activities around the landing site okay because it cannot move further okay so it will be calculating the data around this and we have this lra okay so this lra is the laser reflectometry array okay so as i mentioned that this laser reflectometric array is going to collect a lot of data okay so this is going to collect a lot of data around the surface okay like the landing site it will be collecting the data of the south pole okay so like you guys are saying now that we don't have our data currently but in future we will be having the data around the southern part of the surface okay guys just zoom okay yeah so in the future we can have the sort of data in that particular landing site okay in that particular coordinates we will be having the data with the help of this laser reflectometric array okay so it will be 
studying whole dynamics of the moon system like where the surface where the there are hinges or not there the surface is smooth or not okay it will be studying all sort of things okay then we have this laser induced breakdown spectroscope okay so the objective is very clear okay it is going for the composition of the minerals like we have a magnesium carbon a phosphorus nitrogen these chemicals are really important phosphorus magnesium carbon potassium okay and there is one other another payload which is going for the same purpose this apxs okay so it is going for the element composition like magnesium aluminum silicon and also this is the particular set this is the particular sample space for this sample space this particular payload is designed okay like <laughs> you guys must be thinking like we can collect any sort of uh, element no because when we design the payload na we have to think of it like if we want to calculate the presence of oxygen so we have to design some sort of chemical reaction that chemical reaction will be working under that payload experimental payload and we uh, through th those chemical reaction we will be getting the presence of oxygen okay through those chemical reaction if you want the calcium we can detect the calcium also like if we uh, there are some uh, extrophilic ke uh, chemical reaction there are some introphilic chemical reaction okay i suppose you have studied in your class 10th and 12th okay not 10th in 12th class you must have studied about this chemical reactions and with that help of chemical reaction we studied this elements okay we are not going randomly like we can't just predict like we found this element okay we have a sample space and through that sample space we can only identify okay we have like for magnesium aluminum silicon like we have six seven elements na so we have we will be having six seven chemical reactions and this six seven chemical reaction will be identifying that we have this element or not or if we don't have that element the experiment is failed okay simply simply the experiment is failed okay if we have this uh, chemical composition we will be having the success rate okay and similarly similarly if we talk about this lips okay in the lips we will be studying the composition we will be studying the composition around in the atmosphere and this apx will be studying the soil okay so there is a difference the lips will be studying the uh, atmosphere the presence of chemicals the presence of gases in the atmosphere and apx will be studying the uh, rocks and the soil okay so there is a difference but the purpose is same we are going to study the uh, chemical composition we are going to identify the nutrients around the surface on the surface of moon okay then we have this shape okay uh, till now everything is clear or not because i want to devote a lot of time on shape okay because this is really good shape was not there in chandran 2 but yeah this time we have the shape so everything is clear like why we design payloads why we have payloads okay so the let me revise it for you okay firstly okay so we started with why we are going for the chandrayaan 3 then we studied the mission objective like we are going for the safe soft landing to demonstrate the rover like it can go on the surface or not or we are going to conduct our scientific experiments okay <laughs> till then you can just comment in the chat everything is clear or not yes or no okay then we uh, discuss about the payloads like the launch vehicle okay so for once the launch vehicle is gone gone up okay then we have the your orbit then your launch vehicle will be entering the earth's orbit then after a certain period of time it will be transferring into the lunar orbit then for a certain period of time it will be revolving under the lunar orbit then it will be landing safely on the lunar surface So this is how the things are done. This is the data of your Chandrayaan one moon impact probe with the help of the moon impact probe. So I am just stating clearly here: the India was the first country to identify the water on the surface of the moon. Okay, NASA N3 was able to identify the water on the surface of uh, moon, but the precipitation level and the molecules composition was around eight to twelve percent. But the composition level of the moon impact probe was was much much higher than the n3 which was was the same payload in the chandrayaan one mission okay but of nasa okay then after your rocket is gone it has completed its orbit it has landed on the surface of moon okay after completing the payloads will be moving around okay the payload has done their jobs ramba has done their its job okay it has studied about the your ionosphere and atmosphere gst has done the thermal Uh, study your ELSA has done your seismic studies. Your LRA has created your 3D um, atlas. Okay, 
then your labs and your apx has uh, studied about the composition and the chemical component we can find on the surface of moon okay so th these thing are done okay so i hope uh, how much higher matlab branchu can you uh, classify your question again so till this point everything is clear or not any question guys can i go further clear discover our water percentage okay yeah i will be telling you the water percentage but yeah, i will be sharing the whole document okay with the in comparison with the nasa it was around 45% much okay higher than the nasa okay the nasa payload was the n3 and the the our payload was the moon impact probe okay so the percentage was like in comparison what 45% higher than the nasa okay so you will be concerned na like we have done the discovery okay so we must take the credit okay this is not my word okay this has been clarified by by the somnath sir the chairman of isr he has stated uh, directly uh, told in a recent interview that yeah india has discovered the water on the surface of moon okay no na sir thing okay just believe in your country okay so just believe in your country so we have a shape this is a spectro polarimetry this is going to search for the exoplanets the planet like earth okay so what this particular payload is going to do it will be studying this uh, reflection of sunlight okay like on the surface of moon there will be reflection of sunlight okay there will will be reflection from some other planet also in this round okay they may be from out of our solar system also okay they can be out of our solar system or they may be present in our solar system but we haven't identified them till now okay that's why we name them as a exoplanet okay <laughs> they there can be a so planet in our solar system also but it is not counted in solar system because we have not discovered it yet okay so with the help of those reflection we will be studying the exoplanet like can we find the exoplanets or not okay with the help of those radiations like if the sun radiation is coming from some uh, planet like if it's coming from the earth so the radiation which are coming will be having the uh, presence of your uh, what we can say the photosynthesis processes they are now on earth for the plantation so in that particular radiation we will be having the presence of chlorophylls okay there are some methodology with which we with, through which we can study the presence of chlorophyll in a particular radiation okay and with the help of those radiation we can further study like uh, what is the composition on that planet like what is the amount of nitrogen which is present on that particular planet amount of phosphorus why i'm just saying the nitrogen phosphorus because these chemicals are important uh, for maintaining the life cycle on a particular planet okay that's why i'm saying phosphorus nitrogen oxygen magnesium potassium okay these are important for maintaining a good ecological bio cycle okay so these are important so that's why this payload is very good okay this payload is really going to do wonders okay till date i think some of the organization like nasa has done but this is the uh, next step by the isro okay isro has never done this thing okay and this can be the indication that isro is going to do a lot in the coming days okay they may have their telescope like someone has asked me like priyansh has asked me, okay so they may have their telescope to study the planets to study the other terrestrial bodies okay so they may have this telescope in future okay they may have their telescope in the future okay so this is what the purpose of shape payload is okay it is going to find the exoplanet near the earth or maybe beyond our uh, solar planet or something like this okay but it is going to find something okay it is going to find something so this is all about the payload okay so just i am showing you a small video you may be getting a better idea like what i am what i have discussed now you will be getting a clear idea okay so shom uh, abhijit i am just muting the voice of this uh, video to avoid the copyright okay uh, right so audible or not sorry bro the video is audible 
no it is not audible no uh in starting it was so this is your positioning camera which is in the payload okay and this is in your propulsion payload okay these are the solar panels okay solar arrays okay. when we have this blender horizontal velocity camera which i already discussed okay this is your cape and altimeter okay if you have question na just you know, uh, just uh speak up because i am presenting the video na that's why i can't see the google mute screen okay Okay, let me tell you about this landing legs a lot, uh, more about this landing legs. Okay, so these are just not your landing legs. Okay, these landing legs have some potential to create the energy, to create the power. Okay, how these landing legs are working on a principle of piezoelectric effect. Okay, the round rings which you are seeing, and these are the piezoelectric sensors. Okay, when your lander is going to land on the surface, now. with the help of the pressure which is exerted on the land legs okay with the pressure on the legs it will be creating the energy okay with the help of this we will be having some additional energy backup okay with the help of this we will be having some ad additional energy backups too, okay See, this is how your lander position detection camera is going to work. It is going to identify the whole terrain. Okay, so this was the question by something Branch and Corral. Okay, so this is how the uh, your camera is going to identify the surface. Okay, then it is going to land. Okay. So yeah, this is how your payloads will be coming out. this is your elsa which is coming out it is going just directly into the moon okay this is how your payload is going to work okay so this was regarding the payload okay this was this short video by the isr works okay so now we have the question we have studied about everything about the payloads about the launch vehicle about the orbits how it is going to function now what is difference between the c2 and c3 is there any difference are we have improved or not okay this is the basic question like from the last failure we have improved or not this is the basic question yes or no in the comment section yes we have improved okay yes just speak up guys you are i have suppose 18 to 20 guys you just speak up yeah okay yes anyone here feels that we have not improved from the last chandrayaan 2 anyone there must be one person here who is sitting over there okay there is no one okay so why i have named this slide as a failure mitigation technique because uh, in the interview which was given by the so on sir so he clearly mentioned that we 
have learned from our failures and we are using the failure mitigation techniques okay and this is not a new term this is not a new term which is already done by the nasa okay in the voyager mission they have done this thing okay they have done this particular thing so what we have improved like this time we have two orbital high resolution camera like we can study a lot about the terrain okay we have a doppler velocity monitor we can study the density of the dust and dunes and all the things like we can send the signal and we can study the terrain surface we can study the landing site okay we have a larger area for the solar panels okay we have extra fuel we have extra fuel because we have removed the central engine okay we have a mass we have a uh, portion for the mass so we have created the extra fuel the softwares are improved okay i will be telling why we are discussing about the softwares thing, okay so this is the thing which we have improved in this thing then the test which are tests done on this particular thing like we have done a uh, integrated pole test on the sensors and the navigation uh, uh, sensors okay with the help of the helicopter as a test platform okay like on any helico helicopter we have uh, placed our sensor and we have checked it for the vibrations and all the things okay we have tested it for okay then we have done a integrated hot test okay this is also done for the your navigation and the all the things particular things sensors okay then one most important thing we have done the lag performance test okay we want to avoid this crashing thing this time okay so we have done this lag performance test and we have created a similar thing like lunar sim simulator tent test bed in the isr facility and with the help of this facility we have uh, avoided this particular thing like we, uh, we are not going to crash this time so they have taken all the pre preventive measures like we can avoid the crashing this time okay so this is the test which is already done okay uh this is the vibration bed okay if you can see this is the red particular thing is the vibration bed this is the whole uh, chandrayaan 3 module okay so on the vibration bed we check about the like the pressure and the all sort of vibration which are uh, working on the, the sensors the solar panel thrusters everything we, we check for it okay so the chandrayaan 3 has passed almost all the test okay all the test so before going into the live on mission uh, i push after seeing lot of new things here definitely it has improved a lot okay so any one of you can tell me what is the life of this mission 14 days exactly so the life of this mission is the one lunar day which is the equivalent to 14 days okay and what is the mass of this payloads what, what is, i'm not asking about the mass of the whole launch vehicle including the fuel i'm asking about the what is the mass of the payload what is the mass of the payload any idea is so the mass of the payload is 1778 grams okay this this is the official data by the isr okay and the total mass is around 4000 uh, kilograms uh, it is around roughly 3980 grams okay so i just make a round figure 4000 kilograms okay so this is the your flight sequence okay like which i already discussed with you like we have we will be having the ignition solid boost oil burn then we will be having the separation through pyro mechanism then we will be having the liquid engine burn then your payload fairing will be opening up okay and we will be having a separation of your liquid engine then the cryo cryogenic engine will be working the c25 engine will be working and after that it will be putting up into the orbit okay so this is the data from the last mission La last chandrayaan 2 mission this time it can vary okay it, it, it can vary depending on the weather conditions and all the thing it can vary okay the time can vary like minutely mind mind thing like wow 5 seconds like you can take around 15 to 20 second marginally okay 15 plus minus 15 seconds okay it will be changing this time okay so this is how your chandra or your payload will be going into the orbit okay 969 seconds okay you guys can calculate it okay my maths is little bit weak okay so you can calculate it okay so after this after this whole thing there will be a orbit sequence and after the orbit sequence it will be a landing around 25th of august or 26th of august between 25th to 30th of august it will be landing on the surface of earth okay and after that it will be uh, completing the experiment for next 14 days and there may be a question from your side like after 14 days can we do the experiments or not okay 
<laughs> the answer can be yes or no okay but the most probably the answer will be no 99% the answer will be the no why because the temperature will be like 2 minus 200 degrees centigrade 300 degrees centigrade okay so in that particular condition the electronics cannot wake up okay even human can cannot wake up so electronics is not going to wake up in that particular system, particular conditions okay you must you can say like we can design the thermal control system for that particular condition but uh, can you give me the answer that how you are going to power the thermal control system anyone can give me the answer that yeah you you can say na like for that particular thing we can design a thermal uh, control system in that particular thing we will be maintaining a temperature and in the temperature we will be keeping our electronics alive okay but how you are going to solar panels solar panels how the solar panels are going to get the energy sun will be not direct uh, directly on that particular duration na sun is not facing that uh, moon that particular duration so how any answer there is an answer have you guys heard of rtg radio thermo electric isotopes no okay so on radio thermo electric isotopes everyone is working okay everyone is working and it is the future okay it is the future and in some missions like in aditya l1 mission i am expecting it okay in aditya l1 mission we can use the rtg okay the rtg can create the uh, power the energy for your life cycle around 15 years okay 15 years it can create the energy without any uh, environment without any help okay so without any help rtg can create the energy okay so this is the future of power uh, supply of the space industry okay rtg okay we can't use fuel cells we can't use batteries we can't use solar cells we can use rtg isotopes isotopes will be the future of power energy radio thermal isotopes yeah radio thermal isotopes okay so we can use the radio thermal isotopes this is the future okay so we can use this okay i think i have this slide or not i don't have this slide currently but if you want i can show it to you guys okay um so this is the video i want you guys to ah hey ah the video was audible or not i will repeat okay i will repeat video was audible or not yes okay. Five, four, three, two, one. we have ignition
So this was the whole representation which I uh, talked with you in last one and a half hour. Okay. So now just don't go. I will be telling you. Yeah, Adikesh, one second. Okay. I know you guys must have questions. So I'm just going to tell you the perspective of my own why the Chandran Two Mission was a failure. Okay. So there is only one single reason. Okay. One reason which was stated by the Swaminarayan that due to some software technical glitches but how that software technical glitches arises okay let me tell you let me explain it okay so there is a tolerance limit there is a tolerance limit of everything like if you want to maintain a particular tolerance limit like uh, if your lender is landing at a particular distance like uh, the coordinates are 78 north or 78 south because we are landing in south now so 78 south okay so if the coordinate is this much and 0.23 78.23 and the speed is around, uh, let's say, 50 meter per second. The speed is coming at 50 meter per second. Okay, and the thrusters are, uh, the engines are giving the thrust at around 20 newton, 10 newtons. Okay, so this is the tolerance limit, which is made by the software. Like if you design a particular thing, if you design a power supply, you uh, specify it for zero to five volts. You specify it for 200 to 440 volts. So there is a similar tolerance limit for a software also. Okay, if that particular things goes beyond that particular tolerance limit, it will surely produce the glitches. Okay, it will surely produce the glitches, and that may be the certain reason why the software glitches was there in the Chandrayaan two mission because the lender doesn't identify. The lender was not capable of identifying the proper landing site, and due to which it may have done some. Uh, wrong calculation and due to some wrong calculation the software tolerance limit goes beyond the limits and it, it got crashed okay that's why it got crashed okay secondly there is a one second uh, point i think you guys have not questioned yet maybe you guys can question but before questioning it i am just stating it. there is a tidal interlocking concept okay there's a tidal interlocking concept and which is also if you uh, talk in the language of scientists we, when the moon, when the your rover is going, when the payload module is going, we say it as a minute of horror. Okay, why we say it as a minute of horror? Because we cannot cannot communicate during this particular time interval. Okay, because we are only seeing the one side of a moon. Okay, we are not seeing the other side of the moon. Okay, we have never seen the other side of the moon. Okay, we are just seeing the one side of the moon. Okay, so during that particular thing, like when your payload payload is here, propulsion module is here, but when it is going here. You are not able to communicate, you are not able to see it. Okay. Why you are not able to communicate? Because the cosmic radiations, the amount of radiation which are produced, uh, which are there already, may create interference. Okay. There are some interferences to which your communication cycle, the, the bands which we use, the S band for the communication, get interrupted. Okay. And due to which we cannot communicate. And it can also destroy your com uh, communication. Uh, payload also okay it can, it can come uh, destroy a whole communication cycle also uh, have you guys have heard about the allen belt radiations so there is a radiation belt and if any electronics pass through that radiation belt it will destroy it okay certainly it will destroy 70 20 percent of the neurons okay so this time also we can have this sort of technical glitches like one glitches i can say you that in the psl or g uh, lbm maybe the uh, cryogenic may have something okay these are just uh, my perspective okay 95 percent your lbm vehicle is perfect okay it is going to do uh, i will type in, in the chat session okay. so yeah 99 percent exactly your launch vehicle is perfect okay it can do the work orbit is perfect it, it will do the work okay the tidal locking during the tidal locking maybe there can be some communication glitches okay during the landing i suppose this time there is no certain things okay there may be certain things but 
most probably there there is there are no particular sign that we are going to have some sort of crashes or something we are going to have a proper soft landing okay and currently if you want to know the exact uh, condition of the your uh, lvm the fuel is filled in your lvm vehicle propellant is being filled uh, it has started at 7 pm ist okay and it, it is going to be filled till 2 pm 2 am in the morning and in the morning they will be checking it for the health condition and they will be monitoring it and after that at 2:30 they will be launching it okay tomorrow itself okay now this is open for you guys if you have any question you can just ask it. you can just throw your question at me we are here to answer your questions okay but yeah just turn on your camera if you have turn on your camera only i will be answering your question okay? and those who have raised the hand just ask the question ask the questions guys acha bina camera ko le pucho yaar pucho sir i think adike sama bhu prashad you have raised your hand guys acha swami ji and abhijit manish is there any question on the youtube Uh, no okay. question in the YouTube. Okay. Can the question be out of context from C three? Yeah, you can ask. Possibly, if I can answer, I will answer it. Okay. But uh, it should be technical. Okay, it should not, not be related to something else. Okay. Uh, I was just asking that. Uh, like currently, like the biggest problem if we see in the space is that the space debris, right? So the question was related to that. that okay. also uh, like when we launch a vehicle right mm -hmm. uh, so like take the example of lmv okay so as we have the side side boosters when we separate the side boosters our fuel is not completely burned right there mm -hmm. is some amount of fuel always left in it and that ah. fuel is just revolving around the uh, earth's uh, orbit or maybe came back to earth or who knows right so instead of like just leaving it around like we can why don't we uh, place some uh, gps trackers like in in that so that we can trace that where the uh, our boosters are so that if we want extra fuel in this piece right we can extract from it and we can refuel our satellites they can be uh, so the their lives can be extended yeah uh, abhi i'm sure yeah. on your question the work is Going on. Okay. Uh, have you heard about the Japan uh, JAXA? Uh, they are aerospace company, the space organization. Yeah, yeah, I have heard it. They are already working on this particular thing. Okay. They have started working on it. And in India, if you ask me, uh, have you heard about the Manas to Space? No. I think no. Okay. So the Manas to Space is all also working on this problem statement. Okay. So Manas to Space is working. Uh, JAXA is uh, JAXA is working. The Japan uh, Space Organization. The, these guys are already working on this on this particular problem okay and also if you want to work on this particular thing like uh, you can also start working on it okay this is really simple okay this is not a tedious task to put a tracker on a uh, on turbies or these solid boosters okay the condition is only that why we don't put trackers okay there is a reason why we don't put trackers because we don't want to have any sort of interference in the power supply as i showed you know the there are avionics pipes which are going through the solid boosters and the your liquid propulsion thing you know so we don't want to have some sort of interference because if you are using some gps tracker the gps tracker will be active throughout the uh, launch launching thing and the gps track, uh, tracker may create some, some sort of interference and due to that interference our uh, altimeter let's say our altimeter may produce wrong readings okay it may produce errors okay for example you have a gps tracker okay your gps tracker is perfectly fine okay your altimeter is perfectly fine but the power consumption which has been done by your gps tracker will be much more than your altimeter and the other sensors which are already present in your launch vehicle okay so that's why we avoid 
any sort of tracking mechanism during this launching thing okay we avoid this thing okay but yeah we can calculate the exact location with the help of the satellite which are already present in the space okay we can uh, track the derbies and all the things also uh, japan i as i already mentioned that japan is working okay they they are working on cleaning the space okay the cleaning the space at this and talking about that you are saying that there will be some fuel which is left in the your solid boosters or anything okay and there is no fuel remain okay there can be 1 gram or 2 grams of fuel which is remaining but almost they consume each and every pile this i am taking in respect with the isr because if you know the budget constraint is there okay so due to the budget constraints they use every single gram of that fuel okay so they don't left any fuel and the mechanism is based on that purpose like how your solid booster are getting detached solid boosters are getting detached only after when the fuel is been consumed totally the fuel is been consumed totally and this is an overlapping situation your liquid engine will be starting okay the liquid engine will be starting at the level like the fuel is remaining around 5% in your solid boosters okay the fuel is remaining around 5% in your solid booster then your liquid engine will start automatically and during that particular process okay the solid booster will burn they will burn each and every gram which is present in them okay? they will burn each and every gram okay so regarding the fuel i think there is no fuel remaining in your uh, propulsion systems okay if you're talking about the satellites or thing satellites may have some hazardous things like batteries and all the things so they may have the uh, hazardous things like battery is really hazardous in the space environment okay uh, they, they can be used for but there is always some safe margin in fuel right i said uh, the, there is an algorithm which work there is a computer algorithm sensors if you are there there are the level sensor which we use for this particular mechanism the level sensor judge the level of fuel which is already present okay so the level sensor may have the error of margin around like 1 to 2% plus minus 1 to 2% okay so every sensor is having the that margin okay so due to that they may have one or two gram okay but beyond that they are not wasting much sort of fuel like 1 kg or uh, 2 kg fuel they will uh, the fuel will be in just grams less than 10 grams okay just ma- you can take uh, uh, my words on that particular thing okay you can ask any of the scientists also okay? they make calculation precise to our fuels so oh, and say clear yeah, they make the calculation very precise they like if you are talking about isro they make particularly peculiar uh, calculation regarding this particular thing if you if you want to reach at a uh, 250 uh, km of altitude they will be calculating their yeah, our solid booster will require uh, let's say 100 kg of fuel so they will be taking into the calculation okay so the, there is no fuel wastage i think marginally wastage is there yeah One two percent waste is not considered if you are looking for the six hundred crore of budget. Okay, if you are looking for the six hundred crore of budget, the one two gram of fuel doesn't matter because it will be around, let's say, what will what will be the cost of that particular thing around two thousand or five thousand particularly. Okay, but safe margin wouldn't would be avoided, right? Because it, yeah. But yeah, regarding your question, cleaning the derbies, the process has been started by Japan. and the manas to space in india okay so we should study about the startup which are in the india okay they are really doing good okay manas to space is doing really good in this particular domain also they are uh, doing for the green propulsion they are working on the green propulsion things okay so they are working and i think there is a been a recent update by truva space they are also working to deorbit your satellites and to take um, back those satellites and to uh, all them back on the earth surface but yeah they are in the process yeah, they are in the process they are not done it but manas to uh, space has developed their technology for this particular thing. okay so any more question i hope your uh, question is clear thank you uh, arjit uh, can i add, add something to your points yeah yeah sure sure yeah, yeah uh, see so priyanshu yeah hello everyone first of all uh, let me introduce myself i am harsh verma uh, i am the co-founder and uh, cto of resolute lab so adding to the uh, arjit's point uh, i was saying that priyanshu asked uh, about the uh, recovery of that uh, solid booster so first of all i want to make you clear that if a solid fuel starts burning so 
solid fuel, we, we don't have a technology to stop burning that solid fuel. Once the solid fuel is started burning, then it will burn off completely. So there is no point uh, in recovering that module. Okay. And uh, the height of the S200 boosters are around, like they will detach from the rocket at around 60 to 50 kilometers. Okay. So from that altitude, after consuming all the fuel, they are falling towards the earth in the water. Then to recover that empty, empty vessel, to recover that empty module, uh, it will be more cost than to make it. Okay. So we are not uh, recovering that uh, module again. There are some missions which are conducted, as you know, RLVTD. Okay. So ISRO is also uh, focusing on uh, like reusable vehicles. So yeah, uh, gradually the technology will improve and also uh, we will recover some kind of modules for our better, like to avoid the cost efficiency and all. Yeah. Okay. Any other questions, guys? You can ask about anything like astrophysics, rocketry, anything you want. Uh, I'm just presenting the screen for now, battery purposes. Someone has asked now battery questions. Ah, so, uh -huh, yes. Sir. This is for the particularly payload now. So I'm audible now. Uh, so this is particularly for the payloads. We use this sort of uh, primary batteries, okay? Okay. And solar panels, as you guys know. This is the thing, radio isotope thermoelectric generators, okay? This has been already used in the Voyagers, Cassini and Mars rover, okay? The main drawback is the low efficiency, okay? But these things are the future, okay? In the future, we are going to use this. Things, okay, isotopes are the future of creating the power energy, power source. Okay, okay. So how these work? Like thermocouples, thermocouples are the they are transducer. They will be converting your heat energy into the electricity. Simply, simple reason. Logic, okay. Then, uh, yeah, these are the exact picture of the power batteries which we used in the mission. These are the exact picture of the ISR. Okay, ISR use this sort of batteries. This is the solar panels. These are the lithium ion batteries. Okay, these are the lithium ion batteries. Okay. We don't have used radio isotopes created, so we don't have the picture of radio isotopes. These are the exact picture of the batteries which we have used, the power source which we have used in the missions, like Chandrayaan one mission, Mangalyaan missions. Okay. So we have used this sort of batteries. Okay. So you maybe have question that where we produce this sort of battery in the ISRO centers, like in HCC, BS, BSSC, we produce this sort of batteries. Okay. So this is the power source options if you want to discuss further now. So we can use this power source options if you want to have battery life. Like if you want to have a battery life beyond 100 hours, we will be directly jumping onto the thermoelectric isotopes. Okay, this is the only option. In future, we can look for the nuclear thing. But yeah, currently we are uh, doing research on the thermoelectric isotopes. So this is the this is the current research and this is the future. Okay, but for India, this is the future and this is the beyond future. Okay. So if we consider the current stage of the ISRO developments, so this is the future and this is the beyond future. Okay? So this you may get, uh, you can see in the Aditya Alvan mission. So I'm just expecting it that they may use in the Aditya Alvan mission, but uh, no one knows ISRO what they are go going to do uh, till the last of the mission. Okay. So this was uh, about the batteries which we use in the payload. Okay. I hope. Are about the batteries is also clear, okay? Like, who has asked the thing? Because everything is clear now about Chandran mission, Chandran 3 mission. If you want to ask anything, you can ask it. Okay, we are open. And regarding the data of moon impact probe, I will be sharing it with the group, okay? That is a uh, clear data, I will be sharing it. Uh, Arjit, there is one question uh, in the YouTube section. What yeah. is the purpose of shape spectropolarimeter of habitable planet Earth? Okay, so as much as I know, uh, that that uh, is used to study the atmosphere of the Earth, and like I am not sure about it. But, uh, have you seen right. like uh, have you seen the uh, scattering of light in the atmosphere, uh, like the solar rays? So in the day we get, we see blue, and in the evening time we see reddish sky. So how it happens? It, it happens because of scattering of light. 
so by this device uh, by this program shape uh, we can study about the atmosphere of the earth so yeah this was about the program shape it's clear now who has asked it's clear Yeah, yeah, there is a link in the chat section. You can also visit this particular. Thing. Okay, so shape experiment. If you want to know more, now you can see shape experiment is the future. Okay, <laughs> the ISRO is trying to build the foundation to study exoplanets. Okay, till now ISRO has not done anything to study exoplanets. Okay. So they are just trying to study exoplanet through the spectropolarity mechanism. Okay, there is a mechanism, spectropolarity mechanism, due to which uh, they will be studying the radiations. Okay, the radiations can be coming from the the any other planet, from the stars, all the surrounding of the lunar uh, atmosphere. Like this is your moon. Okay, surround in the surrounding of the moon there can be anything like the stars. Or there can be tiny, small. uh planets which are not yet discovered okay so we can study about them also with the help of the radiations okay so you must be saying that how we can study the radiation so it is a totally the concept of the quantum physics and the wave nature of the particle okay so you have to go into the with that particular depth okay so like i am just giving you the example okay for example uh, let's say this calculator okay this this is a calculator okay this calculator is made up of your phosphorus okay phosphorus okay and this is your sun okay there is a light emitted from the sun okay sun radiations are also having some sort of composition of anything like the radiation i have not studied the radiation just i am giving the example okay so the composition of the uh, radiation is already there uh, at the scientist end like the scientist has already the radiation data and that's why they are sending the aditya alone mission also okay to study the sun okay so this is the beginning this is the beginning i have said now this is the beginning of studying the uh, universe for the isro the isro is really going into the right domain now okay we said uh, pastly previously the isro was just launching the launch vehicle and working as a satellite launch vehicle service but now isro is taking one step ahead and they are creating their shape and further they will be doing the missions for the earth you know, like for the sun okay so they will be getting the data from the sun and the, the radiation will be hitting on this surface okay so the radiation impact on this particular surface and the radiation impact which is done in this their laboratory before like for the phosphorus they will be having some sort of experiment okay they like they will be bombarding the sun, sun radiation particles and phosphorus chemical so they will be having some uh, substrate at the end okay so that substrate will be uh, concluding that this is the uh, this identify as the presence of phosphorus at this particular uh, impacted zone okay so due to this mechanism due to this spectropolarity mechanism we can detect the presence of phosphorus magnesium and all sort of things like around surrounding the things okay so maybe they can just calculate the vegetation level of the surrounding like the other plants like mercury also venus also okay they can study these particular things on that particular planet also with the help of this shape payload okay so they can study this particular thing also okay this is the main foundation of the shape payload this is just the beginning of for the shape payload this is going to do a lot in the future okay this is, this is just the beginning okay and aditya alone is planned okay so maybe they have done this particular thing for the aditya alone mission okay i hope this shape thing is clear now and if you want to study further just study the wave nature of particle you may you will get the idea you will get the exact idea how to study the uh, the radiation how to study the waves how to study the particles how to study the quarks okay you have to go into the depth okay you have to go into the depth you have to study the quarks also okay so you can get the idea okay so any question or should we close this session okay uh, harsh there is any question in youtube no no Uh, Vijit, uh, Manish, can we close the session if there is no question from your side, guys? Yeah, yeah sure. I think no, there are no questions. I think, and I think we can end the session now. Yeah. Okay.
so thank you everyone yeah. for joining thank you everyone for joining and before ending the session i would like to i would like to say that we will be uh, hex universe and resolution lab india will be organizing a internship uh, next month and it will be there will be ex astro scientists and other working professionals who will be in in the internship so don't forget to join the uh, register for yourself for that and get yourself industry ready and also hex universe is will be uh, is launching a, a master class on astrobiology at the end of this month so if uh, which will be where anut soni and uh, yamini tripathi will be teaching uh, in the session so don't forget to register for that session also and also we will be launching a master class session on space law where veronica moronose will be speaking uh, will be the instructor for the session don't forget to join in that session also i think you will be learning a lot from the session and it will be really helpful for if you are looking forward to the, uh, those career opportunity and yes guys space laws are really important if you want to design your payload na space laws space are really crucial because you can't just take anything into this space, okay so for that particular thing you have to study this space laws, okay so you can just enroll in the master classes by the exercise universe okay and yeah regarding that internship that internship is really going to be the one of the finest internship in the country okay? this will be having the ex isro scientists the the founders of various uh, space tech uh, startups will be joining in that internship as the guest lecturers okay so they will be taking the session so you can just join that okay and one person has asked about the uh, how to join the resolute you can just mail to us as a resolute lab uh, at the rate gmail.com okay okay so yeah this is the form for the internship yeah the registration are going on you can just register for the internship okay So thank you guys for joining, and I hope uh, tomorrow, if you are going to watch the Chandrayaan three uh, launch, you will be remembering all the points we have discussed today. Okay, so thank you for joining. And yeah, educate others about the Chandrayaan three mission. Educate your parents, educate your surrounding, educate your friends. Okay, just educate everyone in the country. Okay, let's bring space for everyone. Okay, so thank you for joining. Thank you for joining everyone we'll be ending the session here Moon this familiar object in the night sky has inspired the imagination of astronomers and ordinary people alike from time immemorial humans have marveled at the beauty of the moon used it to count time and navigate the high seas In modern times, moon, the only natural satellite of the earth, has acquired added importance due to the belief that moon is the key to our understanding of the evolution of the solar system in general and earth in particular. Besides, moon's precious resources and low gravity have further endeared it to humans. India a major space faring nation has conducted a detailed exploration of the moon through its chandrayaan program the country has sent two robotic spacecraft to orbit the moon and to take a repeated look at its surface chandrayaan 1 demonstrated india's ability to reach the surface of the moon at a place and time of its choice and with it India became the fourth country to reach the surface of the moon in November 2008. Besides, Chandrayaan 1's conclusive discovery of water on the moon in 2009 was praised as a path-breaking discovery. The follow-on mission Chandrayaan 2 had an orbiter, a lander called Vikram and a rover named Pragyan. In the past 4 years the orbiter has repeatedly observed the lunar surface and even today is working satisfactorily now 3900 kg chandrayaan 3 spacecraft is being sent to the moon with the objective of making yet another focused attempt to slowly land on the lunar surface and to explore it with the help of a rover 
following the spacecraft launched by India's most capable rocket LVM-3. The Chandrayaan-3 lander carrying a rover within it will be carried into an orbit around the moon by the propulsion module. A little later, the lander will separate from that module and will attempt to make a soft landing in the south polar region of the moon. This region is of intense interest as it has many permanently shadowed craters which could contain water ice and precious minerals. Chandrayaan-3 lander has four scientific instruments or payloads of which one will study the moon quakes while the other one studies as to how the surface of the moon allows heat to flow through it. The third one will study the plasma environment near the moon's surface. And the fourth instrument will enable scientists to measure the distance between the Earth and Moon very accurately. The two instruments on the rover help us study the composition of the Moon's surface using X-rays and laser respectively. While the lander and rover will be in direct contact with each other, the propulsion module circling the moon will observe the light coming from Earth, the only planet which we know which is definitely teeming with life. This observation will help in understanding the nature of distant planets circling stars other than the Sun. As Chandrayaan-3 undergoes important tests and gears up for launch, Thousands of ISRO scientists, including those who will launch it, control it and receive the precious scientific information from it using giant dish antennas, are readying themselves for the challenging tasks ahead. In the past, their dedication and skill have enabled India to earn praise from across the world and made it proud. Let us wish them well in this great endeavour called Chandrayaan-3.